We are live from the Tokyo Olympics and I'm gonna give you four of those key foods that you can utilize as an endurance-based athlete to help improve your performance. And we're gonna start right now. What's up everybody, it's Dane Miller from GarageStrength.com and if this is your first time to the channel and you're interested in becoming a better athlete, you wanna be more explosive, you wanna run a little bit longer, you wanna be more coordinated, make sure that you like, you subscribe, and you ring that notification bell so we can help you get to the Olympics. So a lot of swimmers, a lot of endurance athletes like uh, distance runners, like uh, marathoners, all these types of athletes, even soccer players that might be running a little bit further distance in their, their team sports will say, what should I be consuming to optimize my performance? What can I actually eat to optimize my performance? I don't want to be this big, huge, bulky uh, shot putter. I don't want to be a big, huge, bulky, maybe a center guy in, in, in rugby. And what ends up happening is they seem to be a little bit misinformed or they don't really understand what key foods that they need to actually improve their overall performance. And that's going to take us right into that first key food that we're going to talk about. And when we're thinking about endurance-based athletes, okay? We've got to recognize that they are burning a ton of calories. Swimmers, marathoners, distance runners, cyclists, all of these athletes burn tons and tons and tons and tons of calories. So they need to eat nutrient-dense foods that are actually highly caloric, okay? Calorically dense. And so that first key food that I see all the distance runners, all the cyclists walking around with, tons and tons of fruits. So we got fresh plums, we got fresh bananas, we got melon, we got watermelon in here. And on top of that, then the watermelon is gonna have nitric oxide. So that's gonna be a vasodilator. It's gonna help them perform even better, at least have a little bit better mind-muscle connection. But the key concept, this number four food here, is going to be consuming tons and tons of fruit. It tastes good, so you can eat a little bit more. Something that has a little bit greater taste, it's a little sweeter, you tend to eat a little bit more of it. On top of that, it's got a ton of fiber. I believe some of the biggest issues that athletes have is that they only are eating you know, 15 to 20 grams of fiber a day, when if you're eating a lot more fruit, you're gonna be able to get that up to 40 to 50 grams of fiber every single day. That extra fiber is gonna help you break down food. It's going to improve your overall microbiome and that's gonna to lead to greater breakdown of your food. Okay, so eat a ton of fruit. I love bananas. You know, this will have about 80 calories in it. And then you put in this plum. This is going to have about another 80 to 100 calories. And then you add in that watermelon. Watermelon's really, really easy to consume. And all of a sudden, you know, just from a couple things of fruit, you're going to have 300, 400, 500 uh, calories. And on top of that, a lot of these distance runners that I'll see, you'll see them walking around the village with a couple cups of fruit it's like they're constantly eating their fruit throughout the day and that's a really key concept is that it's also portable it's easy to take with you and that takes us into that third key food for distance running and i believe that that is going to be rice okay so when we're talking about guys that are running 10 15 20 miles a day tons and tons of mileage or cyclists or swimmers they're burning five six thousand calories a day this is a ton of work that they're going through they're training twice a day sometimes two hours in the morning one hour at lunch where they might be doing some dry land work two hours at night where they might be doing some extra stuff now they can take that rice with them rice is easy to digest it doesn't really disrupt anyone's gut i've never met anybody who struggles to digest rice and then on top of that it's easy to take with them and you have one to two cups once in the morning, maybe post-workout, you have one to two cups, maybe early afternoon, and then now all of a sudden, you're gonna have a lot more glycogen in the afternoon's training session, you're gonna feel better, you're gonna be able to maintain that body weight. That's one of the key concepts too with endurance-based athletes is that sometimes they actually struggle to keep weight on because they're burning so many calories inside of their sport. And that's a very, very important aspect behind rice, behind fruit, is that it's easier to keep those calories up and that's gonna help you feel a lot better in your training, it's gonna help you recover a little bit better not to mention especially with fruit but also with rice if you're cooking your rice with turmeric there's a little bit of that anti-inflammatory aspect and that's going to help your joints feel a little bit better and lead to a lot better performance now that second key food for distance runners and i've made a plate here i've got kimchi i've got salad i've got my olives but that second key aspect is going to be tuna it could be tuna it could be a burger it could be chicken anything along those lines it could be pork i believe that a lot of endurance based athletes don't eat enough meat now if you're a vegan or a vegetarian that's perfectly understandable but you've got to make sure that you're getting enough protein okay so when we're talking about strength athletes someone who's a strength athlete should be getting about one gram of protein per pound of body weight. So if you weigh 250 pounds, you should be getting 250 grams of protein. Now an endurance-based athlete might only be getting 
anywhere around like 0.75 grams of protein per pound of body weight. So if they weigh you know, 150 to 160 pounds, they still should be getting about 120 to 140 grams of protein. And that's where tuna comes into play. That's where chicken or beef or hake here at the village, they have hake here. They've got that smoked salmon. That's absolutely phenomenal. But make sure that you're eating enough protein. The protein is going to help you recover from those miles. The protein is going to help you recover from that light uh, resistance based session that you're doing. The protein is going to help you recover as a cyclist when you're doing a lot more strength work, you know, in conjunction contrast with your, with your cycle work. So make sure that you're getting enough protein so that you feel better. A lot of endurance athletes will shy away from protein because they think like, oh, you know, I don't want to get big and bulky. It's like, no, you need this to recover. You need this, this protein to actually make sure that you feel better on a day-to-day -day basis. And a lot of endurance athletes might even be anemic. So if you're anemic, you can get more lamb or you can get more beef, but it's important to understand how much that you need to be consuming. And I would say is at every meal, if you're an endurance athlete, try to get 30 to 40 grams per meal. So maybe you have 30 grams of protein in the, at breakfast, at lunch, at dinner, now you're at 90. Well, now you, you gotta have you know protein shake, that's another 30, now you're at 100, you know, now you're at 110, and then maybe you add in a, another protein shake or another uh, serving of meat throughout the day, depending on what time you're gonna be training, and now you're gonna feel a lot better and you're gonna recover a lot easier because you're actually getting that necessary protein, the building block behind recovery. Now, finally, that number one piece of nutritional advice and I was actually surprised, I was impressed. You know, we did an entire video on caffeine and what caffeine can do for endurance based athletes. You can click on the link right here or click on the link down below and you can check that out. But I was impressed. You know, we've gone over rice, we've gone over lean meat, so uh, salmon or, or tuna or, or a lean beef or, or lamb, you know, beef or lamb if you, if you are anemic. We've even gone over fruit and how fruit is absolutely imperative because of the, the amount of fiber that you're going to be getting out of the fruit and how many calories that you're going to be getting out of that fruit as well. So you've got all that covered, right? So you've got the carbohydrates that you're going to be getting from the rice. You've got the carbohydrates that you're going to be getting from that fruit. You've got the protein that you're going to be getting from your tuna or from your beef or from your lamb or whatever that is. And then on top of that, we know based off of our caffeine video, we know that caffeine plays a massive role in the performance of endurance based athletes. So I recommend, you know, we're here at the village in Tokyo. There's a lot of cream, which has fat, caffeine, and what you can do is you can add a little bit of your fat. So you can get a lot of your fat from your cream and you can make coffee. You can put those espresso shots into your coffee. Now you've got three to 400 milligrams of caffeine. You mix in some creamer. You know, let's say you have three tablespoons of cream. Now you're looking at an extra 60 to 80 calories just from that cream that you're adding in and you're getting that whole fat. Okay, so I really, really like utilizing caffeine for endurance based athletes because it can improve their ability to tolerate discomfort and pain when you're, you're under a lot of stress as a, as a distance runner. It can improve your stride frequency. It can improve your power output as a, an endurance athlete. So because your stride frequency is a little bit more powerful, you can cover a lot more ground and then your frequency can actually increase because that caffeine is stimulating your nervous system. So if you're an 800 runner or you're a 1500 runner or you're a sprint cyclist, anything along those lines, your power output's gonna dramatically increase. So again, utilize all these foods. You got your rice, you've got your fruit, you've got your lean meats and you've got the caffeine. I would even throw in that a lot of endurance athletes should actually try to measure how much fiber they get in a day, 50 to 60 grams of fiber. So a lot of kimchi, a lot of lettuce and a lot of fruit. And now you get that extra fiber. You start to feel really good in your gut. You're consuming that caffeine. You're starting to feel really, really wired as you get into that training session and then you're ready to go compete and you're ready to dominate in whatever endurance based sport you compete in. So if you need help building an actual nutrition program around you specifically, you you can click on the link down below and head over to garagestrength.com and pick up our high performance nutrition program live from the Tokyo Olympics here in 2021. Peace.